Now it is my pleasure to introduce you Dr. Sara Savic as our second speaker for the third part of our symposium. Uh, Dr. Savic completed her PhD degree uh, on the diagnostics of Lyme disease in dogs and ticks. Today, she's looking at issues from a One Health approach as a senior research fellow working in a diagnostic uh, uh, laboratory within the Scientific Veterinary Institute Novi Sad in Novi Sad, Serbia. Furthermore, Dr. Savic is uh, uh, one of the authors of the open access book, Vectors and Vector-Borne Zoonotic Diseases, published by uh, Intech Open. Now, Dr. Savic, uh, you can unmute yourself and start sharing your slides. Um, before I start, I would just like to confirm on something that Anya said, um, that I don't think a lot of people know about this uh, database and about um, what you, you were talking about, that there are not so many papers on vector-borne diseases. And uh, I think that is so true because uh, when you told me about it, I had to read about it. And so uh, I'm also wondering how many papers on One Health are there. So I will probably search after, after we finish, I will probably go and search <laughs> about what you were saying. Um, but anyway, my topic was when, when you turned to me, you said um, you wanted to, something to, to, um, to be said about open data. So for me, open data is like my everyday. And uh, I think for all the researchers and for students also, especially PhD students, um, open data is like everyday news, uh, not newspapers, but open data. Now, let's try and click on the next slide. Okay. Yeah, this is the second one. So uh, as you said, um, I come from Novi Sad, which is in Serbia, which is in Europe. I'm sorry I didn't bring the map. I wasn't thinking about it. But anyway, this is a part of Europe that is called the Balkans. It's the part of Europe that always something is going on, the, the, the restless part of Europe, and um, let's say the less developed part of Europe. So uh, I work at the Institute. At the, I'm head of Department for Serology, Immunology, and Biochemistry. And I'm also head of National Reference Lab for Q fever, leptospirosis, and Medivisna virus. Um, and our laboratory basically deals with zoonotic diseases of bacterial and parasitic etiology, uh, including also vector borne diseases of bacterial and parasitic etiology. So that's in short, just to confirm what you said. So um, I think that you have already talked about this and, and what is open data, there is a definition on the internet, but the, the most important words are that it's free to use and you can reuse it again and you can re re redistribute it. And um, so you can, you can use it freely. That's what it, why it's open. And so that means it's open to you to, as a researcher, but it's also open to everybody. It's also open to like the um, pet owners or the, the, the farm owners or to anybody else except you. And where can it be find, found? Uh, open data is accessible. So it's everywhere and you can explore it. And you can anyone can use it for any purpose. That's where the danger lies. But anyway, for us, it can be either internet or books or journals or manuscripts. When you say internet, you could just you know type in any words like religiosis you were talking about um, previously, and you just type religiosis, and then internet gives you like I don't know how many thousands of of websites, and you go one by one. So which one do you trust? Which one is the real one? Which one is one for researchers? Which one is one for owners? So it's like too much information for my taste. But as I said, I'm old. Um, the open data is focused on publishing observation and results of scientific, scientific activities. So that's open scientific data. And it is again available for anyone. The major purpose for, 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 of the drive for open data is to allow verification of scientific claims. Now that is the most important thing that when once you read something, you can verify like if it's a, a method or something, ELISA, whatever, um, or, or a PCR method and you read about it and then you verify it in your own lab. So that's a good, that's a good resource, that's a good data. 
But if it's something that only, you know, talks about a story in a circle and you cannot really apply it, then that's not, that's not a good data. So the advantages is that open data are very useful for researchers, but of course, if you use the right one, if you use the one from, from, from the confident source, like for, for Europe, I know which are, let's say, confident resources and which ones, um, if I go to, those are real data. If you showed me like, like the one, the government Hong Kong site, website that you just showed, it is extremely useful. And I, get, I guess it's extremely confidential. I mean, confident, you, you can have faith in it because it's a government um, website. But sometimes you find data that are written by pet owners or by TV stars or by newspaper people. So those are not research data. And you have to, if you're a good scientist or a good researcher or even, even a student, you have to know how to distinguish between them. Anyway, if you choose right and you do right, then they can increase your visibility. And this is not uh, on YouTube or something, but your visibility as a researcher, because your work is visible. You get citations, you get more points. We are all graded in wherever you live. Your scientific work is graded over the years. You get better grades based on um, uh, citations and then you grow as a researcher. So this is a very good, um, a very good point from open data. It's free of charge for readers, like your student was looking for Denga. And it's, it's free of charge. You can just surf and open. And um, this kind of data attract a significant number of researchers, which again, cite your work, know about you, know your name, look for you, Google you, maybe contact you. You make uh, maybe some wonderful research collaborations based just on some paper that somebody found. And they download your work and uh, or your paper, journal, book, whatever. Um, and this can also lead to, to much greater work, even a project or something. Disadvantages are, of course, on the other hand, um, the ones that can maybe maybe make you reluctant to use it. Um, for, publish, for, for the authors that publish their work, this can be very expensive. The authors pay the fee to have their um, papers on open, uh, open access. And it's for my country, it's really expensive to give 2,000, two and a half thousand, 3,000 euros. I don't know for Hong Kong, I'm not sure. But anyway, for student, everything is expensive, of course. And for, for young researcher, I think that is also expensive no matter where they live. But anyway, for, for uh, open data is always a higher price than, than for other kind of uh, data that is accessible. Uh, the, and actually the viewers and the authors do all the work because the writer, the authors write the paper and then the reviewers look into it and, and do all the hard work um, in, in comparing, looking at the, um, how, how good it is written, looking at the, um, how confident it is, how uh, important it is for that part of science. And then um, they do all the work, but the money goes to the publisher. In case of books, well, also in case of journals, especially for special issues and so on, the editors are the ones who make the most of the effort in preparing the chapters. They do the hard work, preparing the chapters or preparing the, the manuscripts, if it's a special issue journal, and they do most of the work, but uh, they usually get a chance to also publish for free or with a very big discount, or they get a chance, like if there is a 10 manuscripts in, in a special issue, they get discount for five. So also their colleagues can publish for a less price and so on. And that is the kind of payment, if we can call it like that, don't cite me, please. But that is a kind of a courtesy that editors have for doing all this work. It's usually not a paid work. 
Now, if these tools that editors have are cute, if they are uh, usable, if they can really help, then it makes your work much easier and it makes it even convenient for you. So I did a lot of my work, as you said, I did a lot of my work with Intech and um, some with others, but this is my biggest experience. So I, I wanted to share it with you. Um, I'm not advertising anything. It's just my experience and it happens to be with this publisher. So there may be a lot of better ones. I'm not get, getting into that, but this one was good for me. Why? Because as an editor, let's say for a book, I was doing a um, um, few books. Well, actually, I started as a chapter donator. I did first a chapter in a book, and that was just like a manuscript. I, I send it, the reviewers did their work, they send it back, I corrected it, I send it again, and it was published. So it was um, basically like a most simple um, journal. But then when I went into editorial work with, with the book, what does that mean? That means that you get like 10, 12 chapters to look into. You maybe engage somebody else to help you do the review work. You have to be very confident in the field that you are working. You have to know what you are doing. You have to know a lot of authors. You have to know who has printed what. And um, what you get as a tool is a table like you see here, um, just a little part of it in, in the corner, you get a big table where you answer a lot of questions and it kind of guides you through the editorial review process. It's like a mix of both. It guides you through what you have to pay attention to and, and what, it, what are the, the um, um, borders of that line? What are the demands of that um, book or journal or whatever? And then you have other tools such as Authenticate or Grammarly, which are very good tools for plagiarism. So plagiarism, I know that you all know what it is, but it has, um, since this expander of uh, scientific work, it has taken some, um, well, maybe, maybe more than, than convenient. Um, and a lot of people are using other people's work to publish. So until uh, before Authenticate, it was harder to know because you really needed to know what everybody has published and then recognize somebody else's work and then compare it with the paper that you're suspicious that it was taken from. So that was really hard work, really time consuming. Now with Authenticate, again, I'm not promoting this app. It's just the one that I use. There are a lot of others. Um, these programs, um, automatic, automatically find in the text lines that are copied from other people's work. They uh, announce it and they tell you from which paper it is. So it is really a beautiful tool. It's, it saves a great amount of time. So when you get like a chapter that you have to look into and you run it through the authenticate and it gives you 44% of, of plagiarism. So that means that something is wrong. You have to reduce it into 10 or 15%. That's fine. But then you go uh, paper by paper. Then you look if it's the paper of the same author or, or, or it is a paper of other authors or it is a paper, paper of the same other author or something like that. And then you have to go back to the authors and say, okay, you have to reduce it. You have to either rewrite it or you have to say that it is um, taken from other people's work or something like that. There is also this Grammarly um, program that I, I saw. It also uh, gives you hints on uh, grammar, like uh, uh, punctuation or, or spelling or something like that. So it, it also, I mean, the spell check also gives you a lot of that. But anyway, this is one additional program that does that. These tools are, you know, like, like a washing machine at your home. These are essential. It saves you time so much. So if you, if you choose to become one of the people dealing with the uh, editorial in, in one of the publishers, I guess all the publishers have this, but what you get is a dashboard where you see what you either have in process or what you have finished. I just put some examples. This is from my previous work, as you can see. And then um, you can choose, see here you have, can you see my mouse moving? 
Can you see when I yes, move the? Yes, can. Yeah. Okay. Good. So when uh, you have a dashboard and your profile and then your panels and so on, on the dashboard you have your like current work or previous work, whatever you choose, where you can see what you have done, and then you have your profile where you can see everything that you have done so far. This is just also my example, and then you can see the books that you have done or the chapters that you have contributed to and so on which is very useful when you have to, when you want to like, you know, print something or you have to submit something of your scientific uh, contributions or so on. But the most important thing is I think this, they give you also the statistics of what you have done and they give you how many downloads you had of, of either your chapter or your book, how many people cited you and, and so on. And then you have also, this is very cute for me, from, from which countries were the downloads and so on, because this is a European publisher and, and the, the less or none of the downloads are from Europe. So this is very cute. <laughs> but anyway, you can, you can find a lot of statistic work there. And I think that publisher is also contributing to your scientific work through this. They also help you as a researcher um, even though it's hard work that you do for them and not get paid, pay for it, they do this for you and then you can use it for your promotion as a scientist also. So the authors, in, for, particularly for this publisher, all the authors have to pay for, the, for their contribution as a chapter, except for the editor. Editor can have one chapter for free. So in, in order for researchers to prosper and make progress on the scientific scale, um, they need visibility, they need citations. And I think we definitely need to use open publications and I am for it. And I always use whatever is offered. And in order also to cite other researchers, as, as you said previously, also the citations are already given. You can just click and you get the citation. So we, we need the open access like, like a student um, used it. Okay, that's it for me. Maybe I was too long. I'm sorry. No, Dr. Thank Savic, you. it was brilliant. And really, thank you very much for, thank you. for the presentation.